people throw millions of dollars in my face to do something I didn't want to do. What? You've been off, yeah. Oh, they're in the room. Yeah. <laughs> Bus pulled up, 30 girls get out. Bus pull up, 40 girls get out. Yeah. Crazy, I said, well ladies, he's not gonna be here till like 11 cause BET time. A Diddy party? Is it like off, what they have in the media off, or completely? Off the hook. Off the hook? And whenever they went into the alleged other section, yeah. I was never there. Were... Not That's a, easy. It's not a requirement. Bro, the requirement is you gotta say no to Diddy. <laughs> Beyonce has reportedly broken her silence on attending these parties, according to a leaked audio clip. So the pop culture insta page F2C Media dropped what they claim is an audio heck of a recording from Queen B herself. The former Destiny's Child star has been criticized by fans for rubbing shoulders with the bad boy records owner, with a lot of fans clamoring for her to disown Puffy in light of his recent arrests. So the voice in this recording, said to be Beyonce's, admits to being at Puffy's notorious parties in the audio. She said that her involvement in those parties was primarily for entertainment purposes, and she she had no idea about any of that terrible stuff going on. She goes on to say that it is crucial to separate her presence at a party from any illegal activities that might have been occurring. She said, you know I stand against exploitation and violence, so let's make that clear, okay? Now in the comments section of the post, there is a spirited debate over the authenticity of the apology audio. Fans and skeptics alike chimed in with their takes on the matter. One doubter said, AI, delete this. Somebody else said, like, why does it sound like she's reading off of something? And somebody else was like, look. B would never. This audio fake AF. Somebody else thought it might be a mashup of different speeches and AI, but last I checked, Beyonce has stayed silent on whether it's genuine or not. And I feel like if it was fake, she would have wanted to slam that right away. She's been facing a lot of criticism for her ties to Puffy because, well, some folks believe she's being quiet to shield him. A lot of social media users are bombarding her Instagram comments, demanding clarity. Somebody pondered, like, how can you admire someone involved in such disturbing things? Now, a few superstitious commentators speculated that Beyonce might be having regrets about her past decisions in light of everything because, well, they said, and I quote, selling your soul really wasn't worth it, was it? What goes up must come down. Now, we have to say that Beyonce and Jay-Z were not mentioned in Puffy's 14-page indictment in September, and neither of them has been arrested or charged in relation to anything to do with this. They also have not been named in any lawsuits. When J.Lo dated Puffy between 1999 to 2001, she wasn't really a megastar yet. She had starred in Selena, her first major movie, in 97, but then she was arrested with the disgraced mogul following an event at a nightclub in Manhattan but was later released with Puffy without charges. But she hasn't made a peep about the allegations against her ex-boyfriend. A source close to J.Lo mentioned that after the Cassie video leaked, J.Lo won't be speaking up about Puffy because it's not her story to tell. Ashton Kutcher and Puffy's friendship is an old one. In the mid-2000s, the pair were so close that they took to breaking about themselves as the new Rat Pack alongside actor Jamie Foxx. In a 2019 Hot Ones interview, Ashton told Sean Evans that, uh, I've got a lot I can't tell. And when he was asked about their friendship. He could be forced to speak up soon, as the Daily Mail claimed the star was expecting a subpoena about Puffy's wrongdoings. Although Puffy has argued his innocence by pleading not guilty, rumors are kicking that uh, Ashton's worried about that betrayal. Now, he hasn't made any public comments about Puffy's legal trouble, but a lot of rumors indicate he's privately wrestling with concerns about what Puffy might reveal to save his own skin. Another source mentioned that Puffy could say anything, do anything, or turn on anyone to stay out of jail. And apparently Ashton absolutely regrets his friendship with Puffy, considering what has happened he feels lied to, betrayed, taken for granted, and manipulated. But look, these two guys have consistently praised each other over the last 20 years. Ashton went to that very infamous white party. Usher, once mentored by Puffy himself, often photographed at his parties, has said that wild things happened while hanging out with the rapper. When he was just getting his foot in the music industry's door, Usher spent a year living with Puffy. Now, he opened up about this experience in a 2016 interview with Howard Stern, and although he made it sound like a blast, he did hint at something more disturbing beneath the surface. He said that he didn't understand what he was even looking at and very curious things were taking place. Perhaps most telling, Usher made it clear that he wouldn't want his descendants attending Puffy Camp like their father. Well, regardless, Usher's protege, Justin Bieber, would spend 48 hours at least unsupervised with Puffy. Now, it might just be speculation, but um, if you look at all the recent videos of Bieber that have hit the internet from that time period, poor guy. In 2007, Puffy was pictured with Prince William and Prince Harry at a post-concert celebration the Royals hosted to thank all of those who took part in the concert for Diana at Wembley. The now estranged Royal Brothers posed for photos alongside Puffy and Kanye West, with the Duke of Sussex throwing an arm across the jailed mogul's shoulder while the Prince of Wales appeared to embrace him. Now, earlier this year, Prince Harry's name appeared in US court documents related to a $30 million lawsuit, claiming that 
Puffy is someone who does bad things to people. Record producer Lil Rod filed the lawsuit against Diddy and claims that his affiliation to the Duke of Sussex and other stars gave him and his associates legitimacy. Now, the court documents that were filed back in February didn't suggest any wrongdoing on Prince Harry's part. He's not a defendant, by the way. And on the other hand, the Prince of Wales isn't even named in the court documents. It's not known how many times Harry has met the rapper since then, if at all. Now, while Harry's not facing a legal claim, you gotta remember, this is not the first time the royals have been embroiled in serious court allegations in the US. Anna Wintour has been photographed partying with Puffy not once, not twice, but several times appearing with the rapper and sending him that coveted Met Gala invitation contributed significantly to his acceptance into the upper reaches of the fashion world. Their friendship extended to plenty of Vogue coverage for the rapper, who has enjoyed regular features and photo shoots in the magazine for decades, the most famous of which was likely 1999's Puffy Takes Paris. Puffy would ultimately develop such a complex about his place in the industry that he would allegedly tell his employees, when you speak to me, you should imagine that you're speaking to Karl Lagerfeld, as one anonymously told news outlets. Paris Hilton is another powerful person who seemed to give Puffy her stamp of approval by attending his lavish parties over the years. As a survivor of wrongful harm and an advocate for young people, Hilton has been strangely silent about the accusations against Puffy, even though she's posted about having an epic time hanging out at his house. Mariah Carey and Puffy have been photographed together numerous times as they both emerged to music prominence around the same time in the late 1990s and early 2000s. She's also been a frequent guest at his parties, so what does she know? One time there was chatter that actor Leonardo DiCaprio had stepped back from Puffy after a snap from one of those white parties came to light. So a friend of Leonardo mentioned he hasn't been in the mix with the bad boy records boss for a long time. Back when Leonardo showed up at that big white party though, Puffy had tagged him as the number one person he wanted at the bash. Although a sort Source close to the situation stressed that Leonardo has not had any connection with Puffy since attending that party. They made it clear that like, no, he's not involved in any of those freak offs, no links to any of the current legal issues. Okay, we get it. During an intimate discussion with Oprah, peeling away the layers of his complex life, Puffy evoked curiosity by avoiding details about the origin of his well-known moniker the Puff Daddy one. This conversation, which was part of an interview for Oprah's O Magazine, began casually as Oprah was like, you know, like, what's the deal with the name? And Puffy just said, it's a nickname somebody gave me. And when probed further about it, he became notably reserved. He said, I've never told anyone that. I know you get people to tell you everything, Oprah, but I can't look you in the eye and explain that one. And at the time he was changing his name. So he said, no more Puff Daddy. First week in June, we're gonna have a name change ceremony. And he said, I'm rocking with um, PD now. My man Biggie gave me that name. Now, this was all after crimes committed by Puffy that I can't talk about, but I know you know. And that's all for today, folks. See ya.